All right, Honors Chem Kids, we are going to talk about pH today and learn how to use pH and pOH. pH is really just the power of hydrogen or the power of hydroxide, the pOH. And it's a sliding scale that tells us how concentrated we have of hydrogen ion concentration or hydroxide ion concentration. And we have deemed that scale to be either acidic or basic. Now, if you do British English, they would say acidic or alkali. So if anyone says alkali, they're meaning something that is basic. Okay. Now to do pHs and to calculate pHs from the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions in a solution, we have to know logs. So you are definitely going to want a calculator today. Now, if you spend some time looking at the functions on your calculator, you'll notice that there are two log functions on your calculator. So they're a little bit different from each other. So we have ln, which is a natural log, which is not what we're going to use today. If you notice, we are going to do logs and it's spelled with an L-O-G. So you should see an L-O-G button, and this is a log based 10. And that's what we're going to do. So this is basically telling us the power of 10 that that number is. And here's a quick little lesson to show you how to use logs. So this very first column, we're gonna take these numbers here and we're going to put them in scientific notation. And I know you guys all know how to do scientific notation, so pause the, the video for just a second and put all these numbers into scientific notation really quick. So I'm gonna start one to the, one is 10 to the zero, okay? Point one is 10 to the negative one. Point oh one is 10 to the negative two. Let's see, 0 0.001 is 10 to the negative 3. Let's see, now I have 7 spaces, so that's going to be times 10 to the negative 7. And I have 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 spaces, so that's going to be 10 to the negative 13. Okay, so how do you do on that? Now, when you do that, I want you to take a minute and put these numbers in your calculator. You can either do it with this um, the scientific notation, or you can actually type out all the zeros. And I want you to press the LOG button. So make sure you're doing the LOG button and not the natural log button, which is right usually below it. Make sure you use the LOG button, okay? So if I do one and I type in log, so you're gonna actually have to type in log and then you're gonna put the one in parentheses and close the parentheses, my calculator gives me zero, okay? So let's type in log and put in 0.1, close the parentheses, and my calculator gives me a negative one. Okay, so let's do 0 0.01 and do the log of that. Notice my calculator gives me a negative 2. Notice the log of these numbers happens to correspond with the power of 10. Do you think that pattern will hold true? It does. So the log of 10 to the negative 3 will be negative 3 because that's the power of 10 of that number. Log of 0 0.00000001 is going to be negative 7. And so, yes, the log of 10 to the negative 13 is going to be negative 13. Okay, so notice the log base 10 just gives us the power of 10 of that number. Now these happen to be really nice because these are just ones. If we have actual non-one numbers, it gets a little bit more interesting. 
So when we do pHs, they're actually negative logs base 10. So we're going to take the negative of these numbers that we just did, or we can take the negative of the log of these numbers. So I'm going to take find the negative button on your calculator. Most calculators, it's down here. Not always, okay? So I'm going to type in negative, and then I'm going to put in log, and then I'm going to put in zero and close the parentheses. And I get an error number. Let's see if I can do negative log of 0.1. And it gives me 1. Okay, so it's really going to just give me the negatives of all these numbers that we just put in here. So the negative and neg negative 2 is positive 2, and so on. The negative log of negative 3 is 3, and so on. So I will get the positives of these values. Okay, so Make sure that you know how to do the negative function on your calculator, and also make sure that you know how to use the log function on your calculator. Now make sure it's the log base 10 function. Each calculator is different. I use TIs, and so that's what I'm used to. Make sure you know how to use it on your particular model. Okay, so let's go into how we calculate the pH. So the pH, by definition, is the negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion, or to be proper, it would be the hydronium ion. Now, notice that we are in square brackets. So if I have square brackets, this is the molar concentration, which is moles per liter. Okay, so we are using molar concentrations and we are using the concentration of the hydronium or the hydrogen ion in that solution. Okay, so, so we're doing the negative log. So even though the concentrations on these dilute solutions are going to be really, really small, we're always going to have a positive value for a pH most of the time. Okay. Now, pH is just the same thing, only it's the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So once again, we're using our square brackets, so that means molar or moles per liter. Okay, so remember when we discussed the Kw of water, the dissociation constant of water, and I said that the concentration of the hydrogen ion in pure water was 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. So let's take the negative log of that. So we're gonna take the calculator and we are going to do negative log 1.0 e negative seven, and then close the parentheses and our calculator gives us a pH of seven. You could probably just grab that as seven, right? Off of the exponent. Okay, and didn't we also say that the hydroxide concentration of pure water was 1.0 times 10 to the negative seven? So wouldn't that make the pOH of pure water also seven. So a quick, nice little trick that we have here is the sum of the pH and the pOH is, hmm, so if I take the pH and I add the pOH, we have seven plus, and I'm gonna, I usually go out to at least the hundredths. So 7.00 plus 7.00 gives me 14.00. So the sum of the pH of the hydrogen ion concentration and the sum of the hydroxide ion concentration is going to be 14, always and forever. So if I know the pH, I can just subtract it from 14 and get the pOH or vice versa. So the sum of the pH and the pOH are always 14. Okay, so 
this is a really quick and handy trick so that we can find pH, pOH, hydrogen ion concentration, and hydroxide ion concentration. So if I need no one of any of those, if I know the hydrogen ion concentration, the pH, the pOH, or the hydroxide ion concentration, I can find all the rest just based on that relationship, okay? So let's do some practice, okay? And this is what I was talking about. This is the pH wheel. This is how they're all interrelated. So the pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So if I know the hydrogen ion concentration, I can get the pH. But if I have the pH and I want the hydrogen ion con concentration, so the hydrogen ion concentration would just be 10 to the negative pH. So we're going to use our inverse log button here, so 10 to the negative pH. And then if I know the pH, I know that the pOH is 14 minus the pH. Or the pH could be 14. Wow. Sorry. That jumps. So the pH could also be 14 minus the pOH. That's another way to get to it as well. Okay. Or I could do, um, to get to the OH, I can do the OH concentration is 10 to the negative pOH. That would give me the OH concentration. I could also do the OH concentration as um, KW divided by the hydrogen ion concentration. That would also give me the OH concentration. And remember K sub W is one times 10 to the negative 14. Okay, so the pOH is also the log, the negative log of the OH concentration. Okay, so these are all the different formulas that you can use to go back and forth between pH, pOH, the hydrogen ion concentration, or the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so we are gonna be jumping back and forth between all of these relationships a lot today. All right, this just gives you a little bit of the pH scale. So the pH scale goes from zero all the way up to 14, okay? The closer we get to zero, <clears throat> excuse me, the more acidic the solution is. That means the greater the hydrogen ion concentration we have. If we get to neutral, a seven, we have exactly the same hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration. So this is a very neutral solution when they balance each other out. The more hydrogens we have, the more acidic it is. So on the flip side, the more hydroxides we have in the solution, the more basic or alkali it is. And that goes all the way up to 14. Notice that the pH and the pOH are opposite on this sliding scale, okay? Just to give you an idea of how acidic certain things are, for example, a lemon would be about a pH of three. Coca-Cola is about a pH of 3.2, 3.3. Um, vinegar is about four. T most fruit is about four, like tomatoes, apples are about four. Um, milk is about 6.2. I know people say that milk is basic, but it's not. It's slightly acidic. Anything from about six to eight is considered pretty neutral. But milk is about 6.2. Rainwater, depending on whether it's acid rain or not, can be a really broad scale. Now, no, normally in the ocean, before we started all of this acidification with carbon dioxide, and we'll get into how carbon dioxide acidifies the ocean in a bit. 
in probably a later lesson, the pH of the, of the ocean used to be about 8.2. It was pretty basic, and now it's becoming more and more acidic because of the atmospheric carbon dioxide that we're dumping in the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels. If we do cleaners, most cleaners are actually quite basic. So your laundry detergent is a pH of about 13. Ammonia, if you ever clean with that, is about a pH of 12 or 13. Um, if you ever use liquid plumber or Drano, that's really basic. It's got a pH of about 14 and it's super dangerous. So like, don't get it on your skin or ingest it or whatever, okay? So I'll attach a video that will go through some of the pHs of normal household things just so that you can see how that works, okay? So let's calculate the pH and the pOH of some of the solutions with the following ion concentrations at 298. And yes, we use 298 because this is standard temperature. So all of these rules are for standard temperature. Okay, so here we go. If I have hydrogen ion of 10 or 1.0 times 10 to the negative two, let's see, I'm gonna take the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative two. That will give me two for my pH. Now to find the pOH, I just need to subtract the pH from 14. So pOH, 14 minus two gives me 12. Now remember, anything with a pH under six really is considered acidic. Up to seven is really technically considered acidic, but six to eight is pretty neutral. So we would say that this is acidic. That's an acidic solution. Okay, so B, we're gonna type in the negative log of 3.0 times 10 to the negative six. Now this is not gonna be quite as easy because this is not a, not one. So 3.0 um, E negative six, close parentheses, the negative log of that is 5.52. And we're gonna go with to the hundredths. So 5.52 is the pH. So I'm gonna subtract and I'm gonna use the whole shebang of what my calculator spit out. And I'm gonna take that number and subtract it from 14. So 14 minus second answer will give me 8.48. Okay, so that pH is still lower than seven. So we would consider that acidic. Okay, let's do the next one. So we're gonna take the negative log of 0 0.0055 and close that parentheses. That gives me a pH of 2.26. So if I subtract that number from 14, that gives me a pOH of about 11.74. Once again, that pH is less than seven, so we would consider this solution acidic. Okay, let's do D. So we're gonna take the negative log of 0 0.000, let's see, how many zeros is that? One, two, three, four, eight. And that will give us a pH of 4.8. 0, 0.8. Okay, so if I subtract that number from 14, that gives me a pOH of 9.90. 9 
or sorry, 9.9. .9. Sorry, 4.09. I'm not reading my calculator very well. Nine one. Uh, okay, that should be 4.1. Oh, actually, I typed that in wrong. Sorry, I typed that in wrong. And of course, it's not responding now. So let's type that in again negative log 0.123484. Should have probably done it in scientific notation. So 4.08 is what it really should be. And my and then the pH would be 9.92. Sorry for that mistake. And hopefully this will let me start writing again. Okay, sorry. Yay. So, sorry, four point zero eight and 9.92. That's better for our pHs and our pOH. Okay, so take a minute, do these last two on your own, and let's check in in just a minute. So notice though, instead of the hydrogen ion concentration, this is the hydroxide ion concentration. So if we take the negative log of this, this is giving us our pOH, okay? So take, just take a minute to do this. So negative log of 6.5 times 10 to the negative four. This gives us a pOH of 3.19. So if I subtract that number from 14, that will give me my pH. And that gives me a pH of 10.81. So because that pH is greater than seven, this is going to be a basic solution or an alkali solution. Okay, let's do F really quick, negative log of 0 0.0000333. That gives us a pH, or a pOH, sorry, because we're looking at 4.48. So if I subtract that number from 14, that will give me my pH, and that's 9.5. Two, that also has a pH greater than seven or a pOH less than seven so that it is basic. Okay, so let's calculate the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion with each of these following solutions. So if I want to calculate the hydrogen ion from this, I just need to go 10 to the negative pH. That will give me my hydro hydrogen ion. Okay, so I'm going to use, you can use um, the anti-log key or the inverse log key, or you can use the caret key if you want. So if I do the anti-log key or the inverse key, it will give me 10 and then it gives me the um, exponent, and I just type in the exponent. So I'm going to type in the exponent of 6.5. And so this gives me hydrogen ion concentration of 3.16 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay, now there are two ways that I can get at the OH. I can get at the OH by subtracting 6.5 from 14. So if I take 14 and subtract 6.5, that gives me the pOH 
of 7.5. So if I take that, that will give me the hydroxide ion concentration, or I could use the dissociation constant of water to get to the hydroxide ion concentration. Either way will work. So I like to use the pH because that's usually a little bit better. So I'm going to take um, the anti-log or the negative log, or if the anti-log, so 10 to the negative 7.5. That will give me an OH concentration of 3.16 times 10 to the negative 8. That will be my OH concentration. Okay, so that gives you some idea. So take, look, take a look at B, C, and D and see if you can do these on your own. Pause the video and check in in just a minute. So if the pH is 2.37, I'm going to do 10 to the negative 2.37 to get my hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so that gives me, let's see, negative 2.37. That gives me 4.27 times 10 to the negative 3 for my hydrogen ion concentration. Now 14 minus 2.37 gives me a pOH of 11.63. So my hydroxide ion concentration is going to be 10 to the negative 11.63. Okay, so let's do that. And that gives me a concentration of 2.34 times 10 to the negative 12. How'd you do on that? Milk of magnesia. So the pH is 10.0. So 10 to the negative pH is going to give me the hydrogen ion concentration. So 10 to the negative 10.5 gives me a pH of 3.16 times 10 to the negative 11. That's pretty dang small. So if I take 14 and I subtract 10.5, I get a pOH of 3.5. So my hydroxide ion concentration is going to be 10 to the negative 3.5. So if I do that, I get 3.16 times 10 to the negative 4 for my hydroxide ion concentration. Okay. All right, one more example. Household ammonia. The pH is 11.90. So if I take 10 to the negative 11.90, that gives me my hydrogen ion concentration. So 10 the negative 11.9 gives me a hydro hydrogen ion concentration of 1.26 times 10 to the negative 12. It's really small. And then if I take 14 minus 11.9, I get a pOH of 2.1. So my hydroxide ion concentration is going to be 10 to the negative 2.1. So 10 to the negative 2.1 gives me a hydroxide concentration of 7.94 times 10 to negative 3. Okay, so that's how you can use pH, pOH, the dissociation constant of water to get to every single thing of the water equilibrium hydrogen and hydroxide, and how you calculate pH. Have a great day. If you have any questions, please come and ask. Thanks. Bye.